let's talk about avascular necrosis of the hip. I'm Dr. David, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine expert. I actually have somebody that's in a class that I'm taking right now for public speaking that has had, or that currently has, avascular necrosis, and she's in her early 20s. She had suffered a femoral neck fracture, which is basically the top of the bone. It connects your long thigh bone to the ball of the ball and socket joint. She had, and I forget, it was some sort of fall, broke her femoral neck, had surgery, but then developed avascular necrosis. And what that basically is, is the blood supply to the ball of the ball and socket joint starts to basically, uh, the blood supply is disrupted and then that ball starts to die basically uh, and can become really painful, can lead to things like collapse of the ball and then arthritis type changes. So, it, you know, it's a really, really difficult problem, not just when it happens, but over the course of the treatment. So there's a lot of causes why people get avascular necrosis. Like her, it can be from a traumatic event like a femoral neck stress fracture or a femoral neck fracture. It can be from a hip dislocation, especially if you're young and dislocate your hip and it's out for a long period of time. That can interrupt that blood supply, leading to eventual death of the ball, essentially avascular necrosis. Now, it can be for medical reasons too. If you're on steroid use for some medical condition for a long period of time, that can do it. There's a number of medical conditions, things like sickle cell disease that can do it. Even there's a, a condition with uh, divers, Kaysen's disease, where you know the bends basically, the, the quick change of air pressure is thought to play a role and potentially you can get avascular necrosis. The key with avascular necrosis is to try to restore blood flow as soon as possible so that basically it limits the damage to the hip. Again, if that blood supply is disrupted for a long period of time or there's just not good blood supply to the ball, eventually the bone of the ball will collapse. Then you basically don't have a smooth surface in that socket and you could end up with pretty quick arthritis. So, you know, what we do a lot of times, uh, yeah, and I, this is probably a little out of what I do in sports medicine. This is gonna be more your, your total joint replacement surgeons uh, that typically do things like this. But there's things like core decompressions where the surgeon will go in and drill holes in the bone of the femoral neck to relieve pressure and to help blood basically get up to the femoral head. That can be very good if it's early in the disease process. If it's more advanced but there still hasn't been any collapse, there are things where you can tra transfer bone graft and cylinders of bone and cartilage. There's even procedures where you can take part of the bone of your fibula, the outside bone of the leg, with the blood vessels attached to that part of the fibula and put it as a strut inside the femoral neck and to try to restore blood flow from that, the vessels of the fibula. And that's thought to be at least an option. That's a, it's a big, big surgery, but that can be an option. When it gets though, when there's actual collapse, when that femoral head starts to collapse and you're starting to have a lot of pain, that's when they start talking about hip replacements. Now that can be a tough thing if you're in your 20s or 30s because you're probably gonna outlive that hip replacement. You try to get people as far out as you can uh, before you have to do that. But in the case of avascular necrosis, sometimes that can be you know, the only really good option. If this video was helpful, Click the link below for videos that might be even more helpful for you. Make sure to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.